Hey guys, this is Diego here uh, starting part two for Wrecking Stories. I'm just going to wait here for a few minutes and see if anybody jumps in. Finally made it to, I made it back to Austin. In my, my phone. Alright, um, if you guys, if anybody's here and can hear me, let me know. And um, so today I wanted to share a couple of things. Um, I'm back in Austin after a trip to Washington DC. As, uh, as a few of you may have heard in my in my previous reckon story, I was in um, I got invited as a dreamer to go to Washington DC to speak uh, on, be on behalf of the 800,000 dreamers that are in the United States right now. Um, again, just as a refresher, the dreamers are referred to as the kids that were brought here by their parents. Um, when they were kids, they were brought across the United States, whether by plane or by um, or by uh, through the border and um, so there's 800,000 of us here in the United States and we are we're part of America now we're contributing and uh, and I was invited to share my story to speak to a couple of the congressmen and uh, and it's funny because while I was there um, a couple of days prior to the event they told me that they wanted to do a documentary about me and that they were gonna fly into Austin film film me for about five hours as I go through my day and then uh, film me again on Tuesday in Washington DC the main event was gonna be in uh, on Wednesday so we fly out um, well they 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 film me in Austin and then on Tuesday we fly out early in the morning I land over there in Washington DC and we're filming around the Capitol we're we're filming um, in different monuments and uh, and then I get a call by somebody from Washington DC that tells me that they want to share my story in a press con they want me to share my story in a press conference along with with another dreamer and uh, share, share it in front of reporters and that three Republican congressmen will be there um, in support of a bipartisan legislation. So that was super cool and I said yes. I had no idea, I, number one, I didn't know what a press conference was really and uh, number two, I didn't know um, what, what the process was gonna, was gonna be. Um, so that was a pretty epic experience there. I, uh, I didn't know how long my speech had to be, but that Tuesday, we ended up, uh, that same Tuesday, we worked on my speech from 8 p.m. to midnight. And then I woke up early the next morning on Wednesday. I practiced it a couple of times. And after meeting with five different senators or congressmen, um, I was uh, I met with with a couple of other people and then we started the press conference and it was awesome I've never I've never given that sort of speech in in the past in front of like reporters and in front of the congressmen so it was an honor I was very happy to do it and um, it was just awesome so um, the one thing that um, that I wanted to say was that not only that they create a documentary about me and I believe I shared it in the group last uh, last Wednesday but it was an honor to be one of those uh, dreamers that got chosen to share their stories in the hopes that it impacts people and to show that we are really an asset to this country and um, so yeah so that's that it was uh, it was a great experience and um, something that I wanted to share uh, from my from an event that I went to what's up we have uh, Jailene we have Reina Gonzalo what's up Gonzalo how's everybody doing um, one of the things that 
um, that I learned. So last Thursday, I went to a conference in Colorado Springs called Advance Your Reach, and it was for speakers. I, uh, as I mentioned in the past, I, uh, that was my, my, my first speaking conference. Um, just so that I can learn how to be a better speaker and what it takes to be on stage and how to write a how to write a talk whether it's for 15 minutes 20 minutes 45 minutes and one of the best things that I got that I wanted to share with you guys is that there's a lot of speakers out there that love to talk about content right they just want to give a lot of value a lot of value um, whether they're discussing different um, different steps of real estate investing or different things to do about habits or other stuff all of the content that they feel like it's that is great that they feel like everybody needs and they feel that everybody's interested in it but what they first but a speaker what they first need to do is to create a human connection with their audience and in a signature talk there should be five different steps in the um, in in that talk number one everything has to start with a heart so you have to connect with your audience and the best way to do it is by sharing how you are extraordinary because you're there upstage in up on the stage sharing something in front of an audience number two how you're ordinary so how you can relate to the people to make to let them know that you're just like them even though you may have done great things but at the end of the day you're you're just like them um, and then number three is sharing, is sharing that why. When you share that why and when you share that, that, that you're ordinary as well, that they can relate to you, but that yet you've been able to accomplish certain things, that's when they connect with you. And the next thing, after, after you've shared your story, then you can get into the content, right? Then you can get into, into the head. So they call it the heart, the head, and then after you're going through the content, make sure that you have a call to action. And that is like the hands. So may, make sure that you put enough content there so that you, you can explain the why, the what, but the how will be in that call to action, whether it is for them to, to schedule a strategy call or to have a lead magnet um, or, to, uh, or to fill out something. Um, but have that call to action and you can do it the best way if you're doing a PowerPoint is to create a PowerPoint and have a slide that has a lot of juicy content that people take out their phones to take pictures and that's when you tell them hey I'm gonna be um, I know you guys are taking pictures but if you if you go to this link I will I'll make sure that I email you all of this information and that's how you're able to get leads but you do it very subtle because you do want to continue going through the content, you want to continue giving value, and then and then after that, you have to make sure that you finish the loop of opening with the heart. So you close, you open with the heart, and now you close with the heart. So you might be sharing a story about about something that happened with your parents, for example, or um, or an accident that may have happened to you, and then you finish the loop with where you are now and what have you been able to accomplish since that happened whether it was positive um, or bad but just stuff that you that that you've learned um, so you finish with a heart and that's what makes them um, relatable to you and then of course later you tell them again hey if you do have any questions feel free to go to my website or or um, make sure that you send me an email and that you can get my get my lead magnet or whatever it is but um, so so those are the five things you when you have a signature talk you start with your story you have your or the four things the um, your story you you go from the heart to the head to the hands for the call to action and you finish it up with the heart again um, so that was pretty cool and in my press conference I started I uh, that's what I did I had a three-minute speech and I started with where where I was now I started with my name is Diego I'm from Austin Texas 27 years old I run a real estate team I own eight rental properties that give me enough passive income to live and then I shared but life wasn't always this great 
and then I go through my DACA story, the struggles that I've had. Um, then I urge them, then I'm like, I'm here to, to, um, to urge Congress to pass a bipartisan DREAM Act by the end of the year. And then at the end, I, I ended with, I've been here for, 20, for close to 20 years, and all I'm asking is for you to give me a chance, give the dreamers a chance so that we can contribute to America and, um, and allow us to, to continue being here and f to have to create a path for us to become citizens. Um, so, so that's what I did and that's what I wanted to, to share with you guys. Um, and then um, one, do you guys have any questions? I don't know. Uh, if if any of you guys have any questions right now or anything else that you guys might want me to expand on um, but then the other thing that I wanted to share is one thing that um, that I don't know if a lot of people know here in um, in this community but one of the things that has helped me achieve a level of passive income through whether it's real estate or people like investing in stocks for people that like um, that do stuff on on the side like a side hustle or a small business stuff like that one of the important things to make it easier for you to understand really how much money you need passively to to um, to have your 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 expenses is to do the math and I'm gonna give you an, an equation but it's something that I learned from uh, from M1 and Go Abundance. that's basically the mentality that you have to become a 100 percenter what but what that means to become a 100 percenter means that all of your that all of your monthly expenses are covered by your passive income Right, so let's say that if my monthly expenses are $5,000, whether they're like housing, my car payment, let's say I have some bills, some debt uh, with credit cards, I like to travel and I have my insurance, my cell phone, all of those bills, right? Um, so once you know that you have that you're making five thousand um, dollars, that you have five thousand dollars in bills every single month, then what you do is, then at least you have a starting point, and you know that you that you need fi at least five thousand a month to be able to be financially independent or financially free. So that's a starting point right so right now a question for you guys who are watching this video is what kind uh, what percentage are you are you a 10 percenter are you a 20 percenter 50 percenter maybe you're a hundred percent or even 200 percenter right so for easy math let's say that um, you are that your monthly expenses are five thousand dollars and that you have 500 in passive income so what you do is you take your passive income and you divide it by the amount of your monthly expenses. So if you have 500 a month coming in passively, you divide that over uh, 5,000 and it equals um, it equals one tenth, right? One one tenth. So at this point you are uh, a ten percenter. So my question to you is, what percenter are you? If you can take a few minutes and do that math, then you'll be able to figure out and know where you're starting, right? Because a lot of people think like, oh no, I need twenty thousand dollars passively, and then I'll be, and then I'll be able to, to, um, to have like a life and have a, um, to do everything that I want to do. When really. You just need to know what kind of percenter are you and know that you can grow that every year, right? For example, for me, at first my monthly expenses when I first was 23 years old, they were like 2,500 um, every, every single month. So I needed that or maybe like three, three grand. But then as I got older, I got a little bit of, uh, I got a, a few more expenses. I wanted to travel a little bit more. So I raised that now to my, my monthly budget is around $4,000. And I have an accountability buddy 
that um, that we we talk every uh, first Sunday of the month, and we share exactly how much we've uh, how much we've made in actively and passive income, and also what where we have spent money in the different categories, and then we also track our net worth. So that's pretty cool because I've been doing that for since uh, I've been doing that since 2015 or since 2014 and the only reason why I started this is because um, I heard that Pat Hyben and David Osborne used to do this years ago and then uh, and then now Pat Hyben is a super successful um, businessman and he has he has uh, he has a real estate team where he doesn't even manage it he's just the his is just his name there he has real estate um, courses he has a podcast uh, and he is he has a lot of passive income coming in and David Osborne of course um, he's an author he's he owns Keller Williams Regents and he has multiple um, he owns thousands of properties and he's worth like 90 million dollars right so I told myself if they are if they are in, uh, if they're that successful and they've been doing this for years, then I have to do it too. So now every single month, as I mentioned earlier, I go through my, through all of my expenses, my passive income. And now because I was able to get to that, um, understand what, how much passive income I needed, then it just became, I was more focused because I know exactly what I needed to get to. So first when I was 23, I was like, you know what? If I, um, if I just can just get my, either reduce my monthly expenses or number two, if I can buy a house that pays for my mortgage, that, uh, that uh, buy a house rented to roommates and have them pay for my mortgage, then I have that passive income and I can count that towards that. And then all of a sudden, I, I already have all that income coming in and that gives me a certain percentage. Then I was able to set goals throughout the year so that maybe it was just okay. Now that I'm making 1500 in passive income, by the end of this year, I wanna be making 2000 or 2500. Um, so keeping that as a focus, that is not just hitting home runs. A lot of people focus on hitting home runs in real estate or whatever you do but I feel like by you waiting for that perfect deal or by you waiting to get something done that's perfectly perfectly done or get that specific like everybody said oh I want to get I only invest if the cash on cash is 20% I wouldn't recommend that because I've had friends that have told me oh Diego I want to get into real estate at some point and uh, but I'm waiting for this deal I need to hit that 20% cash on cash and I'm like by the time that they're waiting for that perfect deal I already bought three properties right and I may already have been building that passive income where now I may have another like $500 a month coming in while my friend is waiting for that um, for that perfect perfect um, deal one second so so yeah so make sure that you and th this is something that I actually learned from uh, from Pat Hyben so uh, I was on a trip with him and and I heard him say this analogy that people just focus on hitting home runs but you really all you want to do is just get to first base because then once you get to first base and you and you hit another one then now you have somebody on second and on first then you hit another one and another one and all of a sudden those first bases you're getting points the whole time and uh, and that's one of the things that that I wanted to to share with you guys um, I don't know who else is here but if you guys have any questions feel free to let me know um, next week I, so today I covered my uh, my trip to hold on one second. I wanted to see. You. Okay, that's all right. Um, so I just covered my um, 
my trip to Washington DC how all of that went today I also covered the the things that I learned in um, at my event at advance your reach so Brenton hey buddy how are you um, so so yeah I, uh, I cover my Washington trip I cover the five things that I believe are extremely important when you're sharing your story on a signature talk remember that you want to start with the with the heart and when you're sharing your story have your why have your why explain why you are extraordinary and also why you are ordinary so that you can have so that you can have the so that you can create a human touch with your audience then once you have your heart part down then you go to the content then you go to your close to action I mean to your call to action and then you go to your um, back to the heart and finish the loop right and tell people thank you for thank you for being there Hey Jaileen, thank you so much. I uh, I appreciate it. And Brenton, yeah, it's been uh, today was one of the, my most impact. Yeah, yesterday was one of the most impactful days of my entire life, and sharing my story and being chosen out of eight hundred thousand dreamers out there. So that was pretty cool. And uh, and um, and then the last thing that I describe in this uh, in this video was that I also explained what it means to be a hundred percenter and that when you have that when you understand what a hundred percenter is then you can just focus on going slowly to that um, to that amount of money right so I explained that once you know that if your monthly expenses are five thousand dollars then you can focus every year to increase that by a thousand so that you can go from a 20 percenter next year to 40 percenter and then 60 percenter and just to let you know when I found out about this about this mindset of being a hundred percenter um, what's cool is that I was 23 when I first heard that when I first a hundred percenter I was 23 and now four or five years later at the age of 27 I've reached that right I'm between like a 90 and a hundred percenter uh, but it was because I was aware once you're aware you can take action and because I was learning from people in this community and from people in GoBundance it's like success leaves clues right and you want to take action on what other people have done so keep that in mind make sure that you get to your 100 percenter and know also that it it takes time and you're you may not do it your first year it might take like five years but keep in mind that there are millionaires there are millionaires out there that are not a hundred percenters there's people that are millionaires that are working like 40 60 80 hours a week and just because they have that net worth doesn't mean that they are financially free so what I like doing or what I like teaching or what I like making people aware is that for me personally is more important at the age that I am to create that passive income rather than hoping to be a millionaire by the time that I'm 28 or 29 like by next year and still be stuck working 80 or 90 90 hours a week and then I, I don't have a life I want to be something called a whole life millionaire where my relationships are awesome my health is great my um, my work-life balance even though balance really like that doesn't exist but uh, but that I am happy and I have the freedom to choose where I want to go and what I want to do so so yeah I hope that you found that helpful and then um, and next week I'm definitely gonna be explaining the three different stages of house hacking so I'm gonna go into detail so that the people here in the wrecking community uh, can take action and know exactly the three the steps and it's probably gonna be like 15 20 minutes of me just diving into amazing content um, that's gonna be that hopefully is helpful to you guys and uh, and we'll go from there 
All right. In the meantime, uh, feel free to hit me up with any questions in in this uh, in this chat, and I'm also going to be putting a link of my uh, of my talk with a congressman and a link to the video uh, that that went viral. I guess it has over a hundred thousand views now on Facebook, so it's pretty cool. But um, we'll be in touch. Yes, Brenton. This one I'm super excited for next week. Uh, this week was more on philosophies and on what happened this this week. But uh, we'll we'll talk next week. All right, guys. Take care. Bye bye.